Hey, welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Slightly Warped Podcast. I'm Rick. He's Big Show. We're here to bring it to you. Show, how are you, man? I am good. How about yourself, sir? Um, I'm I'm good as well. Good as well. Uh, another TCT. And for those of you who don't know, that's a true crime Thursday. Every month we uh, try to bring a little something to you. And um, we seem to be coming up with a theme here lately. Uh, gangsters. Uh didn't didn't last month we do um i was going to say el chapo i'm i'm still fixated on him but no um uh we, no escobar escobar yeah hey pablo escobar that that is correct uh but today we're, we're talking frank lucas american frank gangster lucas. yeah yes, and, and and doing my research on him I, I realized that Denzel Washington, as great an actor as he is, was the wrong person to blame. From what I read, uh, one of the really? judges, one of the judges who um, talked about him, said that if you watched American Gangster, it was five percent Frank Lucas and ninety-five percent Hollywood. Uh, he said that Lucas was illiterate violent and um he said had some other choice words about him so who said this I, now um see if i got my notes here it was uh from one of the uh there it is uh one of the judges in his trial uh judge sterling johnson jr described the film as one percent reality and 99 percent hollywood Ooh. I gave him less credit than I should have. He said, in addition, Johnson described the real life Lucas as illiterate, vicious, violent, and everything Denzel Washington was not. Interesting. Well, I mean, in that movie, Denzel was pretty ruthless. Yeah, so but you know, Denzel at the very hold on, it starts off at the very beginning where he shoots the dude in the in the chair, um, you know, next to Bumpy Johnson. Yeah. You know, yeah. when they're introducing him, basically. Um, you know, he shot old dude in the middle of the street in front of his brothers. He took one dude and beat the hell out of him with his piano. You I would know, agree I mean, with you. Um, I think that people get caught up in the fact that Denzel played it with such a uh, suave and... Uh, casual kind of uh characterization and and i think that uh that's where uh people get the misconception that denzel didn't play a violent character they remember all the good stuff i don't there's nothing good that he did in that movie what did he do good no nah, but it, it's just like what i'm saying is when you think of denzel washington's acting you think of it as, you know, charm and grace. And and you don't want to get that confused with Frank Lucas, the real life Frank Lucas. Yeah. Uh, it, they, ne they never once showed him reading a book in the movie, so we don't know if he could read or not. But you can't True. deny that the real, real Frank Lucas was a fucking genius. The dude was very business smart. Yeah. I would I would agree with that. Um, and and what's that old a saying? Natural sometimes born leader. Sometimes street smarts is better than book smarts. So I, I get always. that. <laughs> well, always unless you're trying to build a, a rocket, but you know the two different kind of things there. So, um, I don't want my doctor to have street smarts. That's for damn sure. I mean, as long as he has the book smarts as well, I don't care. Oh, uh, yeah. If he's got the book smarts as well, yeah, go for it. Then, then, then I trust him even more because he can make decisions on the fly. But uh, I mean, I don't I don't think there's one. I mean, there might be a few. Don't get me wrong. But I, I thought I thought Denzel played a great villain in this movie. 
Yeah, I think. Um, well, now, which came first, uh, American Gangster or Training Day? Training Day came first. Okay, because I I would always associate that with an evil Denzel, for whatever reason. I didn't say evil. I said villain. There's a difference. Most, like most villains are evil. No, they most villains are just the opposite. They don't want the villain to be. is just the villain is just the opposite of whoever the lead, you know, the story is that's on the side of good. I mean, let's we'll just go Dexter. Everybody loves Dexter, but he played the villain, even True. though you fell in love with his character. It doesn't mean he was evil. Perhaps evil's a poor choice of words because everybody's favorite villain was Thanos and he didn't do it to laugh about it and say, I'm going to kill half the population. He was doing it right. for a reason. Okay. Well, but, for his own personal reasons, but still. Yeah. I mean, I just, I thought that, I mean, I didn't know Frank Lucas's story before that show. And then, you know, obviously you start watching docuseries and things like that, but I felt he was a bad guy. He was a drug dealer. He was a gangster and, you know, no different than Tony Soprano. Yeah. Yeah. Who who also has moments of charm and uh, you, you sort of root for him and then he'll stomp a mud hole in somebody. So I get that. Um, Lucas, uh, here's something else I didn't know. All right. He was convicted a couple times, but he didn't serve as long a time as I thought he did. He did one, what, seven-year stint and then one five-year stint? Let me see if that's right here in my notes. Um, yeah, he was sentenced to 70 years imprisonment and served five years. And then he was sentenced to seven years imprisonment. I forget what else for. And I don't think he did that whole seven-year stretch either. No, so, I think because he made the deal and started busting all the other bad cops. That's right. At that time. That's right. He became an informant, didn't he? Yes. The The guy that actually uh, convicted him became his defense lawyer. And they're, they're, they were good friends. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, this is where stupid comes in. In 2012... He pled guilty to uh, attempting to cash a $17,000 federal disability check twice. Uh, now, all the things he did, he should have known a federal check is going to get alerted. You try to cash it twice. My guy. Uh, yeah. I, I can't save him from that one. That was a dumb move. But even though he got caught, it looks like uh, due to his age and poor health, he received the five-year sentence, and it was just probation. Yeah, I mean, but when you're actually talking about Frank Lucas, what he's done after he got out of jail is pretty irrelevant for his storyline, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember if the movie touched on this at all, but uh, when Frank was um, younger, there was an incident where he witnessed his 12-year-old cousin being murdered at the hands of the Ku Klux Klan. Shut a shotgun for, uh, in his mouth? Yeah, for uh, looking flirtatiously at a white woman. Yeah, they didn't show that in the show, but he, he did mention it a few times in the show. Okay, so they did allude to it. Okay, mm -hmm. it's been it's been a actually big the I've big the big the big time that he said it was when uh, he he was first um, sitting down with the lawyer and he was basically telling the lawyer, you know, I can give you whatever money you are, you know, I ain't afraid. Blah blah. blah. I seen my cousin get shot by the, you know, you know, he was trying to play tough and he, and he goes, you know. The guy didn't fall for it, obviously, because he got right. But yeah, they did mention it. Okay. Um, I'm just looking at some other stuff that he did 
That's right. He he did come up from North Carolina, and then he he later moved to uh, what was it, uh, Harlem. Yes, and that that's when he started doing the pool hustling and started running uh, with uh, Bumpy Johnson. Okay, so he was Johnson's driver for fifteen years before he started his uh, rise. Yeah, but I don't know how accurate that actually is. When you talk, when they've interviewed Bumpy's wife, she said that he, him and Bumpy really weren't close like they depicted. And yeah. Like he said. I, I would agree with that. I mean, again, that's probably part of that 90 some odd percent Hollywood there. Um, just to. But just he to did. I mean, he was a part of it, but he wasn't yeah. as. He wasn't like Bumpy's right hand man. He was his driver. Yeah. Yeah. So now it says when interviewed uh, for a New York Magazine article in 2000, Lucas denied putting the drugs uh, among the corpses of American soldiers. Instead, he flew with a North Carolina carpenter to Bangkok. And what he said was, We did it. All right. Ha ha ha. Who the hell is going to look in a dead soldier's coffin? Ha, ha, ha. We had him make up 28 copies of the government coffins, except we fixed them up with false bottoms big enough to load up with six, maybe eight kilos. Um, it had to be snug. You couldn't have it. Uh, you couldn't have shit sliding around like was very smart because he made sure we used heavy guys' coffins. He didn't put them in no skinny guys. That alludes to what you were saying earlier about how smart Frank Lucas was when he was running those drugs back overseas into the country. And yes, he didn't put them in the bodies. He put them in the coffins. But that Yeah, well, I mean, even... Even the movie said it was in the coffins, not in the bodies themselves. But I know, but I think people had, uh, up until that time, had thought that he that's what he did, and that was the rumor. And, and he set the rumor straight in, in the interview. And, yeah, and that was what I was alluding to for business, but also just his whole, the way that he built his whole um, organization – you know, mm -hmm. he was probably the first black gangster that ran his organization like the actual Italian mob. Yes. Um, and the fact that he was selling a product that was the purest grade and it was the cheapest price at a time when Vietnam vets were coming back to America and were already hooked on the stuff from overseas. Yeah, yeah. So he had pretty much made the market and had it cornered, you know? Pretty, yep. Um, now, we're not in any way, shape, or form trying to idolize the guy, but for what he did and how he went about it, yeah, there is some level of genius in that. Agrees. Now, Frank also was busy behind the curtains too, or should I say, in the bedroom. I believe he fathered seven children. Were they all from the same woman, or do we know that? I doubt it. I doubt it. I I do know, um, because uh, she went to prison too at the same time he did. But when they got out. She went to Puerto Rico for a little while, but then came back. They never divorced and they stayed together the whole time. So, um, I guess now, see, that's talks. where the the, mo the movie doesn't depict that she got arrested. I didn't realize she got arrested. Yeah, what'd she get arrested for? Um, let me see if I've Accessory. got that because it could be. Let's see here. find her name uh, okay uh 
Julie was convicted for her role in her husband's criminal enterprise. That's all it says, and spent five years in prison. After she was released, the couple lived separately for some years, and she moved back to Puerto Rico. After several years, however, they reconciled, and according to the December 7th Village Voice article, had been married for 40 years at the time. So interesting. I didn't realize it, that. So I wonder if it's one of those things where she didn't give him up as far as what she knew. So she went down to, like you said, as an accessory because she had information and wouldn't give it up. It's probably what I would guess anyway. Now, this is Lucas being slick too. Frank uh, converted to uh, being Catholic while he was in prison. Now, you're probably thinking, did he see the Lord? Did he find his purpose? No. Here's what it says. Lucas was well, was known to be eclectic in his religious preferences, having converted to the Catholic faith in prison in uh, Elmira, which he stated he did because the prison chaplain assisted inmates being released on parole. He had Baptist affiliations as well. So he did it knowing it would be a better chance to get on parole. Wow. I mean, okay. Go Frank. Right. So the man, you know, like you said, he ran an organization, did some trafficking. Um, did he have any other uh, criminal uh, enterprises? I don't see. I any. mean, besides murder and all that well, other yeah, crap I'm, that goes along with it. I mean, yes, but yeah, I, I'm just talking about like uh, when I say enterprises, we've got the drug thing here. He didn't run any prostitution rings or anything like that. I, I don't see anything in here. No, nah, I don't think so. You know, and you also we we need to put it into perspective of the time frame. This was the '60s, the late '60s. Yeah. Early 70s. The dude was making millions of dollars a day back then. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the, the, his drug trafficking uh, conviction was in 1976 and then 1984. So th those were his two uh, offenses. Yeah, that's the... the he was raided, his family was raided in 75. Mm -hmm. So that would make sense where, you know, his, all his family members, you know, and he was, like I said, he was a natural born leader. He got all his brothers to take part in his, in his uh, shenanigans and his yeah, empire. I do, I do remember that. Yeah. Um, so and they were all busted and all went down too. So. Yeah. And I would say he was very loyal to the people that were loyal to him. Um, but he ruled with an iron fist, kind of like, um, like, oh boy, that we did last month. Uh, he, he sets an example. If you don't follow it, he comes down hard. And, you know, as long as everything goes right, everything is right. I would say, name me a kingpin that doesn't rule with an iron fist. Fair enough. I doubt I could name you one because I think that, I think that's that seems a to be the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which means I have no shot at ever becoming a kingpin. Okay, I, I get that. It depends how ruthless you get. I don't think I could be ruthless. I'm I'm a softy, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, now, me personally, I did not know that Lucas had already passed away. It looks like he died uh, like May 19th, 30th of right? two, yeah, 2019. So I thought he was still around, but he passed at 88. Yeah, he um, lived a good long life. Yeah, he did. Well, he lived a long life. How's that? Yeah, I, I think his last few years he was in a wheelchair because it says that 
He was confined confined to his wheelchair due to a car accident that broke both his legs. So, you know, somewhere when when he got older, he he got into a car wreck. And yeah. I, I hear that broken bones are really hard to bounce back from the older you get. So, knock oh, yeah. on wood, I hope I never get a broken bone. Haven't had one yet, so I probably just went and jinxed it, y'all. <laughs> if I'm not here well, next I would... week. <clears throat> well, we're not going to be here next week. Uh, that's true. But if I'm not here the week after that, that check the register. Hopefully, all your, hopefully all your bones will still be intact. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But, you know, just to kind of wrap it up, you know, I think Frank's story is very unique, you know, uh, yeah. when it comes to drug empires in that time frame, you know, when the country was actually going through the drug wars or whatever. Um, you know, we talked about the movie. You know, I still think the movie's pretty decent. And his story overall is is, is interesting. Uh, before we close it, I've got a question for you. Yes, How sir. well do you think Frank would have operated his enterprise if it was a decade later? Instead of the 60s going into the 70s, how do you think he would have prospered if he was started in the 70s going into the 80s? He wouldn't have been able to do so because the war was over. So you think that that, that was his jumping off point right there? That That was his... That was why he got ahead is because he had that, what they call it, the yeah. golden triangle connection. That's right. That's and what they call it. He was, he was getting the product direct versus going to one of the Italians to get the product and then having to chop it down. You know, that's what made him so smart and how he was able to corner the market. He was selling the purest grade at the cheapest price and gave it a name, Blue Magic. That's right. Ah, now, see, now I'm wanting to go watch that movie again. I'm going to have to check that out. Um, also, and this is one, because I know that you like uh, documentaries and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Because um, I know it's more than just the American Gangster movie. There's a, a, a it's called The Many Saints of Newark. Uh-huh. Now, uh, the guy that plays him is a minor character uh, on that. It's an HBO films. Uh, it, it's a prequel to The Sopranos. Oh, okay. Yeah, and um, the, there's a guy on there that has a small role, but he's actually playing Frank Lucas on there. Oh, really? So, yeah, so if you get a chance to watch The Sopranos pre prequel, The Many Saints of Newark, uh, there will be a guy in there playing that. I might check that out. All right. Before we cut out of the uh, TCT for today, folks, if you guys have anybody that you want us to talk about, anybody involved in true crime, let us know. Leave us a comment. Uh, it can be on your podcast for your choice. If you're checking us out on YouTube, you can leave the comments there. Or if you want to just hit us on our email address, go to the slightly warped podcast at yahoo.com. And if you got anything else you want to talk to us about, hey, I'm all eyes. So before we get out of here, show, we, yes, sir. we were talking Game of Thrones week by week basis. And I know we wanted to talk about season four. Um. A lot happened on season four, just as it did on season three. Was there anything in particular that you liked? And was there anything in particular that you disliked? There really isn't nothing in that whole series that I disliked until probably season eight. But yeah, yeah. No, this, this, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this was a great season. I mean, from Joffrey didn't it start off murdered. with the purple wedding? No, 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 no. That the red wedding happened in season three. We talked no, about no, that no. last week. No, no, the purple wedding. No, that was I mean, that was episode two. You're talking about when Joffrey was killed. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's he got he one. got killed early on in season four, didn't he? Yeah, episode two. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, not the red wedding, the purple wedding. I I didn't know that's what it was called. Yes. Um because I had never heard that. But the uh you know the fact that he got he got killed. Um you know, you're getting the more of the backstory and you're getting really to hate Ramsey Bolton. He's always been a dick. So yeah. I know, but in this season, this is the one where you're really starting to really hate him, you know. Yeah. Um, because he kills his dad's wife because she's pregnant with a boy, which would take his his rights away from being a Bolton. That's right. That's right. He had, you know, he fed her to the dogs. Um, you know, this is also with Jon Snow with the Ygritte, you know, and they climb the wall. And that, yeah, because didn't John, because the wildling, the redhead chick that, you know, they kind of like hated each other, but liked each other. Didn't she die yeah. that season? Um, I don't think it was end of that season. I got to um I'm I'm reading real quick. Okay. While while you're reading that, one of no, the things No, he that, does, no, it he dies that she dies in season 5. Okay. Okay. Cuz this is when he myself. meets her. This is when he meets her. They're on the outside of the wall. And then they end up climbing the wall with the with Giants Bane, mm -hmm. you know, the big redhead dude. And, uh, you know, they, they pillage and plunder um, in that one because I think Mance Raider, I don't remember if he attacked. No, he hadn't attacked yet. No, they did attack early in that one. Because at the end of that one, that's when uh, Stannis comes in when he's talking to talking to the king, uh, Mance Raider. I'm reading. Go ahead. Well, um, one of the other things that stood out to me was the um, we'll put it in quotations the trial that Tyrion was on, um, if you want to call it that. Because in everyone's eyes, he was already guilty. Um, and then when you look at that whole family, the creepy factor, I don't know if you remember when um, when Joffrey was murdered, um, the brother and sister of Cersei and, uh, God, I forget the brother's name. Jamie. Yeah, Jamie, thank you. Right there by the uh, corpse of the son. I mean, really? Um, no, okay. that's the wrong. You're on the wrong season. Jamie wasn't back. Jamie wasn't there for Joffrey's death. No, he had Jamie gotten was, back, didn't he? No, uh, he was still. He he was still. Uh, excuse me. He was still captive. The Man. scene you're talking about. The scene you're talking about is when Tommen died after he killed himself. Okay, I am. I am so so mixed up on my seat. I I need to sit down and and really watch it again, or uh, take you up on what you said uh, last week. Probably uh, get some of those audio books in uh, while I'm running. That, that that'll that'll probably bring back some things and actually give me some more insight. Because when it's in book form, you get so much more detail. Oh yeah, a lot. A lot more. Um, well, you know what? I could be wrong now that you say that because Jamie did make it back in that season because he's the one that released Tyrion, right? Or had Tyrion released or was that Varys? No, it was Jamie. Because, ja yeah, he um, had it arranged where he got him out. Because he originally wanted Jamie to be his champion. 
but realized Jamie didn't have his hand. So he had, uh, so Oberyn Tyrell, or Tyrell said he would be his champion. Maybe they did do that in front of Joffrey's. And That's Joffrey's. right, because uh, Oberyn, Oberyn fought um, 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 the mountain, the right? Mountain. And had yeah. it won, but was showboating. Yeah, he wanted to make him. Uh, he wanted to make him um, pay because uh, the mountain raped and murdered his sister. Yeah, yeah, and he he could have could have won it if he hadn't, you know. Well, I mean, they both lost if you look at it because the mountain was never the same. True, very true, but. At least the mountain breathed the air again for a little while afterwards. Didn't Oberon get his eyes gouged in and head crushed? Yeah, his skull was crushed. Same thing yeah. that the same thing the mountain did to his sister and yeah. all the all her kids. He did the same thing, crushed their skulls with his bare hands. Yeah. Who? Yeah. A, a beast of a person. Now, speaking of the mountain, the hound. So you are right. He you started the yell. The girl. I, I mm -hmm. hate to go back, but she, yeah, she did die in this season because they killed John at the end of this se this season. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, you're uh, right. It's it's been so long since I've seen season four. So I was just sure. going through a quick synopsis of the season as I was reading it. But yeah, you're right. Yeah, uh, but like we were talking about, speaking of the mountain, I was going to the hound. One more thing that stood out for me uh, was the hound's travels with uh, Arya. You could really uh -huh. start to see her starting to uh, just, you know, learn how real life works. And you always knew that she wasn't going to be that prissy little girl like her older sister was. She was going to be tough, tomboyish to a certain degree. She she was going to make her way in the world. And uh, it, it showed a lot more in the fourth season. Yeah, and at the end of that, you know, she left the hound to die because the mm -hmm. hound was beaten by Brienne in that sword fight. That's right. And she left him to die, and then she headed off to... Uh, I want to say Pentos or wherever that is to be with the the dude that helped her kill all the people at Heron Hall, Jake and Jagar or whatever his name is. I I'm not remembering she, the names. I'll take your word for it. I know who you talked about, but, but yeah, the the dude with the red hair with the white streak or whatever. When you know she get he gave her that coin and said, "Remember this phrase," and so she did that, jumped on a boat and headed to Pentos. Yeah. But you know, Ty or Tyrion, after all that, he's hiding in the walls. Sees that his girl Shay has already bedded her dad, his dad. So he strangles Shay in the bed, and then kills his dad while his dad's taking a dump. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Got him with a crossbow, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Twice. That's a hell of a way to go, folks. But yeah, all yes. in all, season four it was just as entertaining as season three to me. Um, everything yeah, they was gradually get along. really good um, because the you know the the storyline starts to pick up a little bit more. Although you know at the end and you see John stabbed and dies at the end, it kind of throws you off. You know. I do remember that. Everybody's like, oh, my God, Jon Snow's gone. Should we watch Game of Thrones ever again? Yeah, relax, people. It's television. You, yeah, but you I, didn't think he was coming back. No, nobody knew for sure. I didn't yeah. know. But I will say this. I was late to the party um, when I started watching season four. It was right before season five dropped, so I didn't have to wait as long. Gotcha. So, quick grade, because I know we're almost out of time. I give this one a, a solid A. I'm going to go B+. 
And Fair as enough. we get to seasons five and six, you'll see why. Fair enough. And speaking of season five, we will be doing that one in two weeks. We're going to be off next week, but we will be back the week after that. And we're going to have a good topic for you guys. And we're going to talk about season five of Game of Thrones as we keep this thing rolling. Show, you want to take us out of here? Thank you guys for watching. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell on YouTube so you know when we uh, post. And uh, yeah, hug your loved ones, small as I promise. Peace and chicken grease. You guys take care.